Today's species spotlight is on a really cool species of lizard that isn't really seen or heard of a whole lot. It isn't really seen because this is a very cryptic species and not a lot of people know about it. And that is the sandfish or the sandfish skink. It's a really cool little type of skink that does make a good pet, but functionally it will leave you with what will look like an aquarium with a thick layer of sand and a heat pad. And that's about it. These guys are really cool though, and they do make good pets. They originate from the Saharan Desert and parts of the Arabian Peninsula, and like their much more famous counterparts, the sand boas, specifically the Kenyan sand boa, they spend their time underneath that sand, buried deep down to avoid those incredibly hot and bright desert suns. Now, they're not a very large lizard. As you can tell in this video, he's smaller than my palm, which my hand from about fingertip to the end of it is about nine inches or so. So he's much smaller than that. Typically, they don't get larger than about eight inches, so smaller than your hand. They're actually a pretty widespread and common species. We just don't ever see them. And that is because they are 100% built for living under those sands. When you look at them, you can see it has a very sharp but kind of wedged, curved shaped head, which is perfect for navigating and moving and passing through aerodynamically underneath those sands. They have a really nice kind of slick, sleek little body with a short, very short tipped tail and little limbs that allow for rapid movements to be able to bury themselves and they actually will stick it to themselves to kind of move through the sand. And that is where that name, the sandfish, really comes in. They legitimately do swim under the sands. A lot of the lizards who can bury, they kind of undulate or dig through there, but the way these guys move, it literally is, I said undulate before, but that's what they do. When a lizard or a snake swims through water, that's what they do. They make this kind of cool little motion. Some sand boas do it to a degree, but they don't do it as much as a sandfish. This is how they move. They even have specially built respiratory systems and noses and eyes to allow them to be able to do so more efficiently. They have tiny little beady little eyes and their nostrils can actually close, unlike quite a few species of lizards out there. So that allows them without the gravel being able to get in. And then the respiratory systems are built to be able to actually get oxygen in through the close to microscopic cracks through those sand particles, particulates, to be able to get in oxygen into their system without actually getting in those little granules and particulates. When you look at them, in which is very rare to be honest in the wild, but when you actually look at this lizard, it looks like the typical kind of spink, skink shape and build. Short legs, kind of a bigger body, usually a decently sized large head, obviously this one's built for moving under the sand, but like a lot of fossorial or species that live under or in the ground, they have high amounts of iridescence like the burrowing pythons and like some of the legless lizards out there that spend a lot of their time underground, they are very, very shiny. Those are ridophores that react to ultraviolet light. Usually these come in the colors of those yellow and gray to black-ish bands. So they're kind of like a little bumblebee skink. They are insectivores and in the hobby, they are almost all wild caught. As far as I know, no one is actually breeding them, at least here in the United States. Um, but they do do well on a diet of varied insects. They can be crickets, maybe not mealworms. I've never really offered those. I'll give them super worms that will kind of bury down and he'll come up and grab them too. Um, they are technically diurnal, but the only time you'll ever see one in as a captive is if you are not keeping them properly. If you're either keeping them too hot or if you're keeping them too cold. Basically what it is, is the only time that they are ever really documented above the sands is when it's a little cold or there is absolutely no food and it's incredibly scarce and they're moving onto the sands above and they can't seem to find it. Too, too hot is also for the same reason they're just really trying to get away. And that's why they're technically diurnal. The temperatures at night is a little too cold for them to be moving around a whole lot, but they don't really actually breach the surface more than just kind of graboid from tremors, grabbing the little bugs and pulling them down. Now these guys, as I said before, do make decent pets, but you're not gonna see them a whole lot. Being a smaller animal, they don't really need a huge amount of space. Mine's kept in this 20 gallon tank. He's been doing just fine for a number of years now. I think it would be really cool because again, they are diurnal, like I said, probably four times at this point, but it would be really cool to maybe actually put an above overhanging UVB light 
as well as above heat to actually see if we could get it to recreate better naturalistic behaviors versus just the heat pad, which does keep them healthy, but it would be better to always try to recreate and, assimil and simulate those wild environments and try to get natural behaviors. It is on the to-do list for me to do, I promise. I'm not just throwing it out there and telling people to do as I say, not as I do. It is on the to-do list, I promise, and I'll give an update when we get there. Just that to-do list is about 1,400 items long at the moment, unfortunately. Now these guys are really fun and they actually do seem to have some sort of cultural significance. Some of the uh, nomadic Islamic tribes of Algeria seem to have some sort of cultural and or religious references to this specific species of lizard, but I couldn't really find a whole lot about that. Everything else about that just had to do with killing lizards outright. And after two hours of only finding one Wikipedia paragraph that was copied and pasted to multiple websites and articles, I didn't want to sit there and start digging through actual religious text to just talk about this cool little lizard. So if any of you know more in detail about that, it would be really, really cool to know about it. And please let me know down in the comments. But with that in mind, <laughs> It is a really cool species of lizard. It's just one that you're not gonna see very often. They definitely don't like being handled, but it's a really cool type of lizard that you don't really hear a whole lot about, and it's just really fun to know that they are being worked with in captivity. Supposedly, they do do well in groups. You would definitely need a lot more square footage. We're talking a minimum of probably four feet long to two feet wide, so a four by two. They don't need that height. They don't really climb, but they would probably benefit from those kind of large but low logs or small ceramic heights, because again, they have been documented above the ground, but not for very long and not very often. So giving them that opportunity is never a bad thing. And it's not like it's gonna hurt them by either way. So they possibly could do well in groups. Maybe we could work on actually breeding them. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a really cool species of skink. I did my best to leave this guy in that little Tupperware container to get him to try to bury down for you and actually see it, but he just really wouldn't do it. Again, they don't like being handled. They don't like being above the surface. It stresses them out, so I don't like to interact with them too, too much. So this is really all you get is him just kind of burying back into the sand of his little tank. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. There's a whole species spotlight of, I think over 50 species at this point that I've talked about. If you wanna check that out, that I have the end of all of those species spotlight videos. Helps my algorithm because evidently YouTube has decided to stop pushing my content. So it'd be very much appreciated if you could check that playlist out. Please like and subscribe if you can. Tell all your friends. We're doing a bunch of really cool uh, subscriber markers and uh, goal reaches between full tours and animal giveaways. And again, if you do really enjoy this content and you want to support me further other than just viewing my content, which is super appreciative, you can check out the link to my PayPal, uh, not my PayPal, my Patreon. <laughs> Uh, down below as well in the description of this video and all of the videos and there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff in there but again hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video thank you so much hope you're having a great day and we will check you next time